service at the Timberlake Baptist Church tonight. Let's all stand. Get your hymn books out. Turn to page number 259. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse of Jesus Saves. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity we had to be in your house tonight, Father. We thank you for each one that's come out, Father. We just pray, Father, we'll get a blessing from being here as we study your word tonight. And Father, we have many names and needs on our prayer list tonight, Father. We just ask you to reach down and touch each one right now, Father, as we call them out to you tonight. Pray you be with our pastors. He leads the flock here to your church, Father. We pray you, you'll anoint him from on high with the messages we need to hear that help us to walk closer with you and be with, bless him and his family, Father. Thank you for our church attendance and tithing and giving and our deacons and trustees who also make decisions to uh, operate this church, Father. We thank you for all that they do for us. We uh, pray for the sale of this property and our new building and Blair Construction with the plans by, by Mike Maracas, the architect. We pray all this will work together and we'll soon be on that land, Father, and our new building worshiping you in spirit and truth. We thank you for eternal broadcasting and that ministry that reaches around the world as we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, thank you for our WTBI broadcast in Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you for Believer's Bible Institute, Father, where we can study your word more in depth and learn more about your word, Father. Thank you for the many ministries here at our church, the Sunday school and teachers, our youth ministry, our children's churches, our Tuesday Bible study. And we pray, Father, these will continue, Father, and they'll grow, Father, through, uh, through the work here at the church. We pray, Father, for the peace of Israel, pray for our president, our nation, our economy. We pray for the conflicts in the Ukraine, also in Iran and Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. Thank you, Father, for our visitors, Father. We pray they'll continue to come, and maybe they'll soon join here at our church, Father, and help us to worship with you. Thank you for our new converts, Father. We pray you'll help us as we train them in the way they should go, Father. And, Father, we have many needs for salvation tonight. We lift them up to you and pray you'll touch each one before it's eternally too late. We pray you'll be with Nick Albino, uh, Carl Amos. Wade Ayers, and also with his health, uh, Brandon and parents, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Bobby Dalton, who also has cancer, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, who also has cancer, pray you touch her, 
I'll also be with Robert Durr, Lester Dodson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbitt, Brandon Godsey, the Horsley family. I'll be with Jimmy Jones, uh, Billy Keene, Mike Keene, and Stephen Keene. I'll be with Ryan and Tyler Kinder. I'll also be with Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, uh, Chase and Haley Minter, uh, Darren Moore, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Caitlin and Victor Sanchez, Mark Shira, Tom, uh, Timothy Shira, uh, Sean Stout and Bobby Stout, uh, Cindy, Kimberly, Madeline and Megan, and Melvin Thompson. Be with Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. Father, we pray someone will go and, and minister these, to these people, Father, and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he can do for them before it's eternally too late. And we pray, Father, to get back in church for these individuals and families. We with Connor Barnett, the Cleary family, Buddy and Carol Galden, Cassie and family, uh, DJ and Chelsea, Gary Graham, Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed, uh, Glenn Tickle, and Daryl Tickle and family. And Father, we have many health needs we're going to lift up to you tonight, Father. We just pray you'll be with each one of those tonight. Be with uh, Irene Bell, be with Jenny Barrett, be with my, me and my kidneys. Pray you'll be with Earl Connor, be with Jack Dale, uh, be with Tony Dalton, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, Amy Grafton, Faith Ann Hawley, uh, Audrey Hoskins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Beverly Keene, Angeline Merriman, Shelby Martin. Be with Gary McCollum. Good to see him back here tonight. Be with Diane Mills, Betty Mitchell, who has blood clots. Be with Toby Moore, Shannon, and Stan Moorfield. Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma. Be with Loretta Nichols, Angie and Billy Oaks, Vincent Sarah Piotta, Al and Cheryl Podobinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, uh, Carol Tickle, Ricky Toller, Anita Warwick with a foot and back, Evelyn Watlington, Leon and Connie Wiles, Lois Witt, Harold Yancey, Rowland and Betty Yates, and Amy Young. Father, also be with Kathy McCullum, who's recovering from a fall. Be with Caleb Moore, Teresa Horbitt, who has migraines. I'll be with Ann Clark and her health. I'll be with Faith Ann Holly again. Father, pray you be touch her since she fell today. And pray you help her, help her bear this uh, fall, Father. Be with uh, Shelby Martin and her sinuses. Be with Brenda Gregory, who's uh, been called, uh, who is in hospice now, and the family of David uh, Kelter Brittle. I'd also be with uh, Brother Earl A.T. Connor. Touch him tonight, Father, and restore his health. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do for us tonight, for we ask these things in your name. My Father in heaven, I pray in Jesus' name as we continue with the list that you be with each and every last individual that's here, Lord. It's just um, watch over and touch them. Ones with diabetes, Amanda, Ron Island, Sherry Bray, Logan Kramer, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage, Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Ward, and Wendy Yancey, Lord. I pray for all the ones who have COPD, just touch them, touch your body, touch your lungs, and everything else, Lord, and just continue to be with them. Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richards, Amanda Watson. Lord, be with all the ones who are in nursing homes. Just give them, uh, let them know that you're there, and you're being with them, and you just give them a touch from above, and just be with all the nurses that take care of them, too, and just continue to let them be like the other people, too. Dale Leffer. Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Ruth Newman, Francis Robertson, Joyce Thomas, Diana Wagner, Fidel Crane, Michelle Johnson, Kyle Baldwin. Lord, be with the ones who have all times of dementia, Ronnie Durham, and Mary Malone. Lord, I pray for all the friends and family and neighbors. Lord, just be with each and every last person on this list. Austin Bagley, Vinnie Bagley, Carol Barnett, Phyllis Clary, Annie Cleary, Remy Cleary, Jean Connor, Amy Ferguson, Mark, Francisco, Back, Chad Gossie, David Hart, David Hart, Toby Bridal, Toby Hines, Mary Heiss, Nick, Madigan Hart, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Jamie Milam, Jeff Morris, Donna Owen, Pam Rains, Betty Ray, Dale Ray, Florence Richards, Robert, Robert Roberts, Charlie Robertson, Dolores Simpson, Vicki Shelling, Cancer, Shirley Shires, Glenn Nancy Slayton, and Shirley Taylor, 
Vickers, family, Garland, Watson, Preston, Watson, Chris Wilson, Jim White. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name all the ones who have cancer. Just touch them, watch over them, be with them, give them strength, and just, Lord, just cure them and uh, be with them. Joni Atkins, Patria Atkins, Kathy Holland, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Pam Carter, Bonnie Carter, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Bales, Pat Dalton, Brenda Davis, Melody Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kellen Dunn, Jamie Ferguson, Marie Fowles, Tammy Files, Amanda Glatter, April Golden, Brenda Gregory, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Anita Hyden, James Hall, Kevin Hopkins, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Hundley, Jason Long, Dan Mays, Linda Mahanos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Tony Phillip, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Robinson, Patricia Robinson, Neil Rogers, Linda White, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Margaret White, Frank Wilkinson, Dave Wilkinson, Laura Profile, Hans Bergens, just pray in Jesus' name, just answer them according to your will. Jenny Barrett, Barrett, Tyler Bethel, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Mary Graham, Mallory Hamlin, Sean Teresa Horvath, Janice Hodges, Kenny Van Hunt, Essen Lewis, Shelby Martin, Mike Dan, Mills, Angie Moore, Kelsey Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Bonnie Raines, Daisy and Nick Fitzpatrick, Mike Tickle, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Vickman, Matthew and Chee Williams, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, Robert Yancey, a little bit with all the ones who are in college right now, just because you give them strength, let them be a testimony to people, just uh, help them continue to get the knowledge and stuff they need as far as according to get the job done as far as whatever they're called to do, Tyler Alderman, Becca Clarity, Allison, Bradley Gotze, Carlton Hoskins, Trinity Langley, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Nasilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey. Lord, I pray for our revival that's coming up on the third and the fourth. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name this is a packed out house for the glory of God, that souls will be saved, lives will be changed, and just be with the pastor that's going to be preaching. Lord, I pray for us as 2022 to continue to focus on soul in the Lord and being light to this lost and dying world as far as our town. I pray for our soul. I pray for more souls to be saved on Sunday, lives will be changed, and ones who have been saved to continue to grow and nurture and admonition of you. I pray for the Jack and Dale family, just be with them, just touch them, give them peace and comfort and strength, Lord. Lord, I pray for all our missionaries that are across the nations, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, just use them in a mighty way. Continue to help them to be a light to all the ones that we cannot reach because they're out there in the missions field. Samuel Aldridge, Virginia Assembly of Independence Baptist, Rangy Ashcraft, Beacon Baptist Missions, Commander Al, Manuel Bala, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Micah Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Colors, Joseph Dell, Krista Giacomo, Fortina Dratez, Faye Dykes, David Gibbs, Virgil Ganglin, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Engineer Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nesta Lubugin, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahanos, Thurman Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Pastor, Cuban National Pastor, Pakistan, Dr. And John and Linda Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Patkoff, Nick, Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, David Richard, Demetrio Rodrigo, Rollock Ministries, Jason Sorbaugh, Tabernacle Children Home, Hal, Hal Williams, and David Weiss. Lord, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name. <clears throat> We'd like to remember tonight our pastors and evangelists that we support. That's Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Chris Esterline, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson, John and Derek Kaiser, or D John Kenzie and Derek Kaiser and Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Joel Logan, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan and Tim Schelling, Davy Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, 
Philip Stout, the Tobert family, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. May we bow our heads in prayer tonight. Father, we come humbly tonight, Lord, thanking you for this opportunity to be here. We praise you in my holy name, Lord, that you give us the desire to, to, in our hearts, Father, to come and worship you in truth and in spirit. We pray for the message tonight, Lord, that it touch our hearts. And each thing that's said tonight, Lord, it would help us to walk closer to you and be able to help others as we try to witness to people. Father, the more we know about you and about your word, the more that we can help others. That's what our job is now that somebody spoke on, spoke on our behalf and got us to come and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for those people that continue to help pastors and evangelists to spread the word that Jesus still wants to save the lost souls. Father, we love you. We thank you most of all for, you love, for your great love for us. And we ask you now to forgive us where we fail and come short each and every day. Again, we love you and thank you for all that you do by keeping us safe and that putting in our, that, heart, and that desire in our heart to come and serve you. We love you again and thank you for all you do. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Good evening. All right, this is from, we didn't know the person standing first, but it's Mike Petkoff. It's a call to work with youth in Greece. And he's been praying to get back in the Thessalonica, Thessalon I don't know. That's what he said. That, that word. Thessalonica. Thessalonica. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> For many years, I have hoped and dreamed of God calling me back to Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Now that I am back, God has led me to partner with the local Yom <laughs> Thessalonica team, which is led by best friend Timo, his wife Maria, Ron, and his wife Hannah. And OEM Greece are partnering together for the first youth center. So they're trying to get a youth center going on because of, you know, at least with COVID and everything that was going on. It's sad to say, you know, a lot of youth were wondering what's going on. But... So they're trying to make this uh, youth thing all the time so they can also be a light and witness to them. So it's pretty cool so far with all of our ed. We want to, it to be a welcoming space where the young people of the city can find a community where they can be long and be loved, invested in, and cared for. We want to become a community that encourages and helps strengthen the local Christians and reaches out to the young people that are unreached, hurt, or searching. The vision is, I saw many young people last, lost, lost, tired, and confused, and with life after the pan pandemic and a big net need for community-based ministry. But I know inside the biggest need is Christ and the hope, purpose, and love that he brings. So that's what I was just telling you. They're trying to want to be a witness to them so they'll come to a more safer knowledge of people. They're just like all the stuff that we do, like Fall Festival and the other thing, you know. At least we're reaching them. And we're trying to touch them. A place where you can invite young people to join us so we can get to know them, encourage them, have fun, and get into a deep conversation about life and our faith in God. It has been encouraging to see how three missions organizations are partnering together every week for this event to be possible. And we'll give you some more stories. A young man with previous addiction problems who were was looking for a good, healthy community, has been coming almost every week. So he's been coming to this thing every week. He had addictions and stuff like that. So they're a little willing. He'll come to a saving knowledge of Christ. And then another one, I met this guy at the event, and we went out and talked about life and God until 5 a.m. So I must be doing an all-night thing or something. But that's a good thing. Like you said, just like camp and stuff. You know, they got all night long to talk about the Lord. Because, you know, them kids are going to stay up all night long. But, uh... It's just amazing that, you know, they're trying to do, just with the, everything going on, that they're still trying to reach the youth because the youth are getting harder and harder to reach. I mean, listen, even the older people, I mean, I try to witness people a lot all the time. I mean, I witnessed the one guy and tried to get him to come to a concert, and he was just like, I'll be in the wrong state of mind after Saturday. <laughs> so I probably won't come. <laughs> so at least he was honest with me, but I'd still encourage him to come. But that's all I have. Thank you, Brother Sean. 
All right, let's all stay and get a hymn book sat there. We'll turn to over to page 324. Sing the first, second, and last verse of Draw Me Nearer. chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, on the other side of eternity. We're going to talk about what's going on in the throne room of heaven. Heaven is a throne room. It's the place where God abides. It's the place where the angels and the beast and the uh, elders worship him and the uh, Old Testament saints have gone on before and the New Testament saints have gone on before all worship God right now. Here in Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. You ought to circle that word voices in your Bible. And there were seven lamps of fire burning 
the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. When these lightnings and thunderings and voices are talked about, they're all meaning one thing, the presence of God, the presence of God. And so we see this when God came down on Mount Sinai to meet with Moses. Look at Exodus 19, Exodus 19, verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice, circle that word voice in your Bible, the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. The presence of God made them tremble. Let me ask you a question before we go another step further. When's the last time you trembled in church? When's the last time you trembled when you prayed? When's the last time you trembled when you read your Bible? The Bible says when the presence of the Lord is around, it'll make you tremble. Say amen. It'll shake you. It'll move you. When you read the Bible, when you pray, it ought to mean something to you. Then the Bible says, <clears throat> in verse 17, And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. That's what a leader does. Say amen. amen. Lead them to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount, here's that word, would it quaked, it moved, it shook greatly. And when the voice, there's that word voice again, of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God what? By a voice. <clears throat> and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Now the word voice here, or voices here in Hebrew, in the Hebrew in the Old Testament, and the Greek in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, are alluding to an address, a proclamation, an attention getter to hold your peace and make you pay attention to what's about to happen. It will be of significance from God. So this attention getting lightnings, thunderings, and voices were there to make you realize God was fixing to do something. I think the sad thing about the part of the day we live in today, not much happening on God's part. It's not because God's not able. It's not because God doesn't want to. It's because we won't let him. We will not let him. We won't get serious with him. Let me tell you something. When God gets a hold of you and speaks to you, it's going to shake you. It's going to move you. It's going to squeeze your heart and the juice is going to run out of your eyes. I don't see much of that today. I see people coming to church mad, aggravated, with a third agenda, with an attitude. Best me preach if you can. But they all said, come to church ready to meet with God. And nothing's going to happen apart from us humbling ourselves, hearing those voices, hearing that thundering, seeing that lightning. Let me tell you something. It starts thundering and lightning, you're going in the house. You're not going to stay outside. You're going in the house. The only place you're going to hear the thunder and lightning of the voice of God is in the house in the house of God. There's not enough. And y'all pat yourself in the back. Y'all the good crowd tonight. You're here. But we've allowed COVID and we've allowed other things to halt us from being in the house of God. And God can't be heard unless it's through his word. Amen? And it should move us when we hear it. In Exodus, it was the commandments that God was going to give Moses on the Mount of Sinai. And in Revelation, it was Jesus about to open the seals of the title deed to the earth and judge the earth and pur purify it of man's sin and wickedness so he could come back at the battle of Armageddon, destroy the armies of the world, and begin his millennial reign as the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne in Jerusalem. And here we're introduced in this passage, if you look back to Revelation 4 or 5, 
that as they stand before the throne, they hear these thunderings, lightnings, and voices. Something's about to happen. But before the something happens, God describes something here. Jesus rather describes something here. He said, there were seven lamps of fire burning the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now tonight, it's not an accident that he said they heard the light, saw the lightning, heard the thunderings and the voices. And then the Lord Jesus says, let me explain to you about the Spirit of God, the seven lamps, the seven uh, characteristics of the Holy Spirit of God. You're never going to feel the thundering, the shaking. You're never going to see the lightning. You're never going to hear the voices until the Holy Spirit is in control of your life. And if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, because he is a person, he's not an it, he's not a thing, he's a person, and he has seven characteristics of him that are, if they're not in your life, it's going to pass you by. I'm afraid, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a moment hesitant to say, I believe 90% of the Christian world who are truly saved, there's a lot that aren't truly saved to start with, but those that are truly saved are missing the lightning, the thundering, and the voices because the Holy Spirit's not in control of their life. They're in control of their life. America is a selfish nation, and they want to control their destiny, control their life. I freaked out this week when I saw on Fox News that this Chrissy Teigen, or whatever her name is, married to John Legend, the room had gone around. She had a miscarriage. That wasn't good enough for her. She should have kept her mouth shut, but some people don't. Some people ain't got no sense. She goes out in public and says, I didn't have a miscarriage. I had an abortion. Here's a man and a woman who are married, and the woman has an abortion, and they're proud of it. What would make somebody do something like that? I'll tell you what. Money. She didn't want to be interrupted by having a baby with her career. Her career was more important than the life within her. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're in a selfish world. My nation's selfish. Our country's selfish. And selfishness is the number one enemy of the Christian being filled or controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. I had a man sit down. We, we, I stopped out and got us a salad for lunch today. And we said, and somebody come sit down at our table. And he was talking to me. And he said, I've been to, well, I think there's seven churches here lately. He said, all they're talking about is speaking in tongues. All they're talking about is speaking in tongues. And let me tell you why they're doing that. Speaking in tongues is not for this age. It was a temporary sign gift that went away when the Bible was completed. Do you know why people want to speak in tongues? They want to think they're more spiritual than somebody else. That's got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It's got nothing to do with God. It's got to do with them wanting to be somebody. Amen. We cannot accomplish anything for God with pride in our life, with arrogance in our life. We can't do it. Selfishness must be obliterated in order for these seven characteristics. Now, what's a character? I think you've have you got this on the screen, Kim? Character. The mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. So we know the Holy Spirit's an individual. The Holy Spirit's a person. So who is he? When we think about y'all, we think about your characteristics and who you are. When you think about Sean, you think of somebody who doesn't have the gift to sing it. <laughs> when you see Sean, you have a person who doesn't have a dictionary. Sean, somebody make you laugh. Say amen. That's, I'll say something nice. I'll say something good. Uh, and, and most of the time he'll do what you ask, okay? But that's, his, that's who he is. That's his character. Everybody has different characteristics about them. They're different individuals. Well, who's this Holy Spirit? The most wonderful truth here is that, first of all, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. I'm going to remind you something you need to remember. The Holy Spirit lives within you. 
He is with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he's there for you all the time. And since the Holy Spirit is present in our lives, if we submit and we surrender to his leadership, these qualities that I'm about to explain to you, these character traits, can be present and evident in your life, in my life, every day, every hour that we live. So if he's within us, we yield to him, put him in the forefront, guess who we're going to look like? Guess who we're going to act like? Guess who we're going to talk like and walk like? The Holy Spirit of God. You know, some Christians, I don't understand what moon they're on because they're not on the same planet we're on because they think they're God's gift to the church but they don't act nothing like the Holy Spirit of God. They don't act anything like the Lord. And if we're going to be close to Him and He's in control of our life, you're going to be like Him. You're going to walk like Him, talk like Him, and, and, and serve with Him in your life as the controller and the guider. Him being here allows us the privilege, him the privilege, God the privilege, to live through us, listen to me, and work miraculous in our lives. I, I, this year's going by fast. Anybody go by fast for you? I mean, you're looking, next week's October. Do you understand that? And within seven days, we're going to be in October. I mean, I just don't know where it's going. Revival is a week from this Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, a week from here. Now, it's going to be here. We've got to start praying. We've got to start working. Amen. For ourselves, first of all, to be here to get revived. Then bring some people who need revival other than ourselves, too, to hear the word of God so that we can see miracles. If you want to see some miracles, you must yield to the Holy Spirit. I, I've met people who prayed for years for God to save somebody. But you know why God hadn't saved that person? And God hadn't answered that person's prayer. Because that person's living such a wicked life, God can't answer their prayers through them. The Holy Spirit's not, if you're not controlled by the Holy Spirit, your prayers can't be answered. Amen. We've got to understand these facts. I asked somebody this, have you ever heard of the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit? Who? Huh? <laughs> they didn't know what I was talking about. Never heard it. Never been preached. Never been taught. So when I preach here, I don't see them in them verses either. That's because they're in another verse. Look at Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah 11, 2. We become a vessel of honor to him and for him when we yield to him and we take on his characteristics. And here they are listed in Isaiah 11, 2. And the Spirit of the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit, shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom, there's number one. Uh, number two. Number three, understanding. Number four, the spirit of counsel. And number five, might. And the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And to make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not only judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. This is talking about Jesus. And when Jesus was alive on earth, who lived in Jesus? The Holy Spirit. Who guided Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit. Listen, this ought to boggle your mind. The same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus lives in you. The difference between me and you and Jesus is Jesus totally yielded himself to the Holy Spirit. we got some selfishness in us. we got some selfishness. I'll never forget one time I went to hear Jerry Clower. Lord, have mercy. I love that man down the hall glove slop. Oh! Marcel Claude, Eugene Clovis. I loved all them stories. Every last one of them. Loved them all. And he'd come out on stage and had this big old medallion on, had a diamond look like the size of one of Queen Elizabeth's sitting right in the middle of his chest on a necklace. And it was a star of David and then that, that diamond in the middle of it. And somebody asked him, what's that mean? He said, well, the star of David tells you who I love. I love Jesus. He says, but the diamond tells you I'm a little bit selfish. <laughs> I'm a little bit selfish. He was honest, amen? And we need to get honest with ourselves. We need, to get, we need to quit judging other people and get honest with ourselves. Then it says, and the breath of his lips, 
that's, that's speaking, folks, shall slay the wicked. His, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now, in this passage, we see the sevenfold character of the Holy Spirit. And it's important to us as the church because he lives within us. These characteristics, listen to me, they're in you. They just got to be brought out of you. They just got to be brought out of you. And the only way to do that is to yield. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. If we submit to him and surrender his leadership, the Holy Spirit can express his character to us uh, in love and grace and raising us beyond ourselves. Tonight, every one of us in this room, everyone listening on the internet, if we'll just listen to this message, it will take you from where you are to where you need to be. It'll get you above yourself. Some people didn't come to church tonight because they just couldn't get over the self. It was more important to do what they wanted to do instead of what God wanted to do. Tomorrow, God's going to want them to witness to somebody and they're not going to take time to do it because what they're doing is more important than what God needs them to do. We've got to have something. All of us. I've got to have it. You've got to have it. We've all got to have something to help us get over ourselves so the Holy Spirit can do what he needs to do. Romans 6.13 Neither yield your members as instruments of, what's that word? Unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves to God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as those who are alive from the dead. God's alive. Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit's alive. How in the world can we live? Listen, this is important. How can we live a dead life with a living God sitting inside of us. It doesn't, we don't have to be dead. We don't have to be ineffective. We, we could be effective for the Lord. All these spirits are available to us if we'll just yield to the Holy Spirit of God. He says, in your members as instruments of righteousness, that's your body, your thoughts, your, your actions, unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. This is possible for everyone. I think that's one thing that frustrates me as a preacher. I know that it's possible for me. I know it's possible for you to rise above ourselves and be effective for God. But I don't see many people giving it the effort. I've told y'all before, I hate Jimmy Long. I've hated him ever since I was a kid. Because Jimmy Long made me do what I didn't want to do. He made me get out and run laps around that soccer field. He'd make me run laps around that basketball court. And he'd make me run laps around that baseball diamond. And I didn't know why I didn't like to do it back then. I had asthma. I didn't know I had asthma. I didn't know I had that problem. It was just hard for me to breathe and run and breathe and run. But he made me run, 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 run. And I hated him. I despised him. I knew after school what we had to do, and I thought, oh, here we go again. Around, around, around again. And so, but Jimmy Long was trying to get me above myself. Amen? That's what practice is for, to get you above yourself, to get the best out of you. He was trying to get us in shape and teach us how to play ball, whether it was soccer, baseball, or we had to play flag football because we didn't have money to pay that big dollar insurance to play tackles. So we had to play flag football. But he taught us how to play all those games. He tried to get us to find our real potential. But I fought him every step of the way. And I never played first string nothing, and it wasn't Jimmy Long's fault. It was my fault. It was my fault. Now, it's very clear here. First of all, let's look at the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is the supernatural source of strength, our power source. It's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's not even what you have. Our source of power is the Holy Spirit. His presence in our life gives you the grace to get through what you need to get through in order to do what God needs you to do. This is his presence in our lives. This happens the moment we're saved and sealed by the day of redemption. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, My grace, my presence, 
my strength is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in fellow said at the table today, he said, I'm just tired of, of having to have patience. I'm tired of having to long suffer. I said, sir, I said, you've got to understand that when we're suffering and when we're weak, that's when God can do the most with us because we're out the way. We're out the way. Our pride's out the way. Our arrogance is out of the way. Our ability's out of the way. He can excel because we're weak. And it says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may what? Here's your question for you tonight. You don't look at nobody else and look at you. Ask yourself the question and be honest with you. Is the power of Christ on your life? You say, preacher, I don't know how to know if the power of Christ is on my life. Are things happening you can't explain? If you can explain it, God didn't do it. If you can't explain it, then God probably did it. Say amen or amen. Amen. Is the power of God on your life? Is, and this is the real answer. Is the Holy Spirit in control of you? Are you in control? Is some sin in control? Is some other person in control? Or is the Holy Spirit in control? Number two, the spirit of wisdom. The supernatural truth. The word of truth. Folks, if you don't like to read your Bible, you're in big trouble. If you don't read your Bible every day, you're in trouble. If you don't study the Word of God, you're in trouble. Because that's the only truth there is in this world. There is no truth on ABC, NBC, CBS, or Fox. There's no truth on the Internet. There's no truth on your cell phone. You don't know what's the truth. But I'm going to tell you something. Every time you pick up that Bible, you can be guaranteed you've got the truth in front of you. And that God cannot lie and he will not lie to you. And the spirit of wisdom, if you want to know what to do in this life, the Holy Spirit can rise up in you when you read that Bible, you study that Bible, you memorize that Bible, he will put wisdom in your heart and soul. Say amen. Amen. Now this verse is one of the most important verses in the Bible. This is not the first time I've read it to you. It won't be the last time. You need to memorize this verse. Because in this verse is the truth of how you live in the Holy Spirit. How be it, John 16, 13. He, the Spirit of truth, that is the Holy Spirit has come. He, the Holy Spirit, will guide you personally into, what's that three-letter word? All truth is going to come through the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit has been quenched and squelched and grieved in your life, truth is not in control. I've met some Christians. When I walked away, I, was, I thought I was a monkey. I was scratching and questioning. Where in the world did what they said come from? It sure didn't come from the pages of that Bible. It sure wasn't the Word of God. They were way over here somewhere pulling something out to read somewhere and calling it theology, but it's not in the Bible. The Bible is the truth. Period. Amen? The Bible. Now, it says, For he shall not speak of himself. Here's where the charismatic movement has a real problem. They glorify the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit could get in their face, he'd say, Be quiet. Don't glorify me. Glorify Jesus. Who did God the Father glorify? The Son. Who does the Holy Spirit glorify? Jesus. They want to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't want glorification. I double ding dong dot dare you to find in the Word of God, the King James Bible, anywhere where the Holy Spirit says glorify Him. It's not in there. He don't want you to glorify Him. He wants you to allow Him to take over. Understand the difference? He doesn't need you to talk about Him. He needs you to allow Him to move you out of the way and Him take you over and you do what He says to do. That's what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. And, and listen to this. But whatsoever he, the Holy Spirit, shall hear. Now, common sense tells you, what is the Holy Spirit listening to? Ask yourself that question. 
What is the Holy Spirit listening to? I'll tell you what he's listening to. He's with you. So whatever you're listening to, he's listening to. Now, have, you, have your knees started knocking yet? Mine has. My knees ain't hit each other in 30 years. We have a responsibility to feed the Holy Spirit the very word of God by reading it, quoting it, studying it. That is our responsibility. Feed the Holy Spirit. Remember years ago, they come out with this toy back when me and first got married. Her me, our cousin had one. Running around the house on Christmas Day, and she'd sneak up behind you and tape everything you said, and turn around and let you listen to yourself talk. It was called a yak back. And she thought that was the greatest thing in the world because she'd run around, sneak up, and you'd be talking. She'd tape you, and then she'd say, ha, ha, ha. She'd hit the button, and you'd hear yourself what you said. And nobody wants to hear the stuff talk. Amen. Nobody, everybody wants everybody else to hear you, but I mean, you want everybody else to hear you, but you won't hear yourself. But that's, yeah. Hey, whatever you tell the Holy Spirit, whatever you read the Holy Spirit, is what he's going to, he can't give back to you only what you give to him. There it is, right there in this verse. You have to feed the Holy Spirit. I, I'm amazed that when I'm studying for messages, how I remember verses I memorized riding a bus to a ball game when I was a teenager. We'd have our Awana books with us, and our Awana leaders was one of the coaches, and we'd memorize verses all the way to the ball game and all the way back. We'd memorize scriptures, and they'd mark them and give us credit for them, so we went to Awana, so next Wednesday night we'd get points for it. Now, of course, we were driving for the points because you got awards. You got all kind of awards for doing that. But you know what it did to me? It put the Word of God in my mind, and I can't get it out. I'm studying now, bits and pieces of scriptures come back, and I love Ken. He put a sword searcher on my computer. I put that phrase in that sword search and hit search, and boom, there's that verse. I cut and paste and put it in my message. But if I hadn't memorized it on that bus, going to and from them ball games all them years, and I hated ball games, but my mama made me go, so amen, so I had to. So I did the best I could. I did what I knew I could do good. I could memorize that scripture all the way to the game and all the way back. Let me tell you something. Somebody asked me, hey, why don't you throw them awards away? They're all broken up. I said, I earned them awards as a kid. Memorizing the Bible, I'll never throw them away. That's the best awards I ever won in my life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit gives back to me just exactly what I gave to him. Now, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom. I see we're not going to go through all this tonight. Let's do the last one, the third one. We'll do the rest of them Sunday morning. Number three, the Spirit of understanding. The Spirit of understanding. The supernatural illumination of His truth in our what's in our minds. We can see that the world. Can, we can see what the world cannot see by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why the world thinks we're weirdos and freaks? They don't see it the way we see it because they don't have the Holy Spirit to help us see. They think living in the world, drinking and living wild and gambling and having things is the way to live. They don't see that the way we live is the way to live because they don't have the Holy Spirit to show them. I think God showed me what matters. I'll never forget years ago. There's a lady who went to this church years ago, so don't try to figure out who it is. It's a long time ago. But she worshiped her yard. Literally worshipped her yard. When I'd go see her, that's all she wanted to show me was this tree she got from Japan and this tree she got over here and this tree she got over there and how nicely even her yard was mowed all. She mowed her yard twice a week. She's crazy. Twice a week she mowed her yard. Fertilized it twice a year. And she said, I got to aerate my yard. I didn't even know what that was. If you ever hear me aerating my yard, just tell somebody I done gone plumb loom. I done gone plumb loom. Nobody comes see me. I don't care. I just cut the grass so the snakes can't get to my house. Amen? You know, I, I, I just, but she worshipped that yard. I try to say, you need to be at church tonight. No, I got to do this to my yard, and I got to do that in my yard. I'll see you Sunday, but I won't see you on Wednesday. I, I got to work on my yard. I said, preacher, how did things turn out for that lady? Horrible. Horrible. She never rose above herself. She never rose to what she could have been. And she's gone, man. She's dead in that yard. If she come back and see that yard, she'd kill somebody. 
because they don't take care of it like she did. I bypass it all the time. What are you trying to say, preacher? We have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to know what's important. Amen? But if we don't have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to know what's important, we're not going to do what's right. John, I'm sorry, Psalms 119, verse 168. I've kept thy precepts and thy testimonies. I have kept thy precepts, what you think is right, thy testimonies, which you prove and works good, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. You will find no understanding in any other venue outside the word of God. Some of my family, when I was a teenager, they thought I was weird because I went to church every time the door was open. I wouldn't go to the KISS concert with them. They'd go and see KISS. You want to get you a ticket? Nope, I'm going to church. They, they thought I was weird. They thought I was crazy. I carried my Bible on top of my books. People thought I was weird. No. I just knew if I wanted the truth, I had to carry it with me everywhere I went. And I wanted the world to know what I believed in. And it wasn't my geometry book because I hated geometry. It wasn't my algebra book because I hated algebra. Boy, when I took algebra two, I said, that's all the math Walter's ever going to take. And it was true. I never took another math class. Now, I loved science. I loved history. And some of y'all may not be, I loved English. But when it come to math, I, mm -hmm. But on my history, top of my history book, on top of my science book, on top of my English literature, was the Word of God. Everybody knew what was important and where I was looking to my life from. You see, I'm old enough now, I'm starting to see things. I couldn't see when I was young. I, I, I've run out of fingers and toes on how many of my schoolmates are, have died before me. Just opened the paper the other day and another one had passed away, 58 years old died of cancer and out of all those I list on my fingers and toes one of them give their life to God and put God first and that was Jay Roberts he died at 60 years old but I can look back on Jay's life and I know what he was before he got saved and I know what he was after he got saved and he served God all the days of his life. But he's the only one. Out of 20 people I know that are dead, only one found the wisdom. The rest of them died. They never got above themselves because they never realized the spirit of wisdom, the word of truth. They never understood the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit that lives within them. They never had understanding. They thought life was about how much money can I get? How many cars can I have? How many vacations can I take? How many new clothes can I have? How many experiences can I experience? Folks, life can be a good experience in the Lord, but if you experience the Lord in this life and the life to come, we're going to have a whole lot better time than we do now because we gave our life to the Lord. But the only way it can, it can work is if we yield to the Holy Spirit. I'd love to keep you here and give you the next four. We'll have to do them Sunday morning. But I want you to understand that if the Holy Spirit's in control, what a difference he makes in our life. We can live our whole life and not waste it. That's my fear. I don't want to die saying I've wasted my life. I want to die saying Walter invested his life in the things of God. And you ought to want to say the same thing. Every head's bowed, stand to your feet, every eye's closed. Father, <clears throat> I thank you for the spirit of the Lord and your grace in my life. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom, the word of God that I study in my life. I thank you for the spirit of understanding that when I read that truth, you supernaturally help me see what's right and supernaturally give me the light to follow the right path 
and show my mind the right way to go and my mind doesn't get twisted or, or conflicted or confused, but it gets concentrated on convictions of the Word of God so I can carry out the commission that God has given me in my life. And Lord, that's for all of us. Lord, help us see what the world cannot see by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom from the word of truth, from the grace of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Lord, help us gather around this altar tonight and beg for you to show us how to get over ourselves, how to surrender to you 100%, and to follow you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and not be hindered by the enemy. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. They begin this verse of invitation. Come tell God how you need his help, because you do, and I do today as well.